Take it away. All right, game number two of Team Malaysia versus Secret. An interesting draft on both sides. Always fun to see that Undying pop out as our panel talked about. A go-to pick for Malaysia, maybe not too often, but one they tend to dominate with. Excited to see how this will work out, Parker. Yeah, I imagine with this composition, their first two pick, Bristleback, Night Stalker, Storm Spirit, we're looking at, again, early game aggression, mid-game dominance coming out from this Malaysia team, and curious to see what their lanes look to end up being. They have got KYX1, the Storm Spirit, possibly suggesting this will be a mid lane hero with Night Stalker going mid. All right, time will tell. Let's look at Team Secret. Maybe they're laning lanes a little more predictable. Zai, he'll be here on the Axe. Puppy, he takes the Bane Elemental. That puts S4 on the Zeus, probably slated for the mid lane. Arteezy on the Phantom Assassin. That puts Kuro on the Wisp. Team Malaysia, as mentioned, KYX1 Storm introduced the rest of the team. Mushi on Disruptor. I have Ketchik Imba, the mid lane player on the Night Stalker, joining me on Undying and Ahayu on Bristleback for Team Malaysia. So looking like a Bristleback undying off lane here for Malaysia as some initial wards come down. Very interesting. Our secret actually looking at a potential aggro try. It seems like it here with Zai in the safe lane. Ooh, curious stuff. I guess worried about the just pesky undying dual lane in the off lane is something they just don't want to fight with a PA. Mm -hmm. That was a big problem for them in game one where the PA just wasn't farming well against the Phoenix. So. This time around, they say, look, top lane's going to be the easier place for our TC to get farm. Let's send him up there. Okay, Wisp, not typically your aggro try hero, but could work out for Secret. We'll see if Malaysia end up adjusting their lanes here. It is a 2-1-2 coming out from them. They either need to dominate this axe with Johnny in the bottom lane, or they need to move him somewhere else. Undying a hero, notorious for his early power, especially in those first couple levels with the decay stacks. He is not a hero you want to square up against. Yeah, Zai's just going to keep backing off anytime he takes too much decay here. Your tangos get added efficiency when you're missing strength, so in some ways this isn't the That's biggest true. problem. So That's a good point. Zai should be okay to get XP out of this lane. Very unlikely he gets much farm. Well, same kind of a thing happening in the top lane with Arteezy already moving past the tower to find last hits. KYXY forced to kind of move into the tree line here and just leech XP, find some stray last hits wherever possible. Both sides making life a little bit difficult for the uh, safe lane farmers. Let's check in on the mid though. S4 versus Ketchik Imba. Night Stalker mid feels like a blast from the past. We see him more in that off lane or uh, supportive role, but this is, uh, this is fun. Yeah. I'm Curious to see how this works out. Definitely does not feel like the hero's best role uh, in the current meta game, but that's not to say this can't work. I think one of the big things is that this is a hero that you don't want to really completely abandon and empty the mid lane. Most teams put a more farm oriented hidden mid. A Zeus is not going to go off ganking very often. Shadow Fiends, Queen of Pains, here is that sit mid, soak up farm for some time. Night Stalker, as soon as four minutes in comes, you feel like there's a lot of pressure and you actually start ganking. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, we may see him actually farm through the first night. If there's an opportunity to gank or he gets an aggressive Dive rune, like a haste or a double damage, maybe that tips the scales. But maybe just waiting to that second night cycle could be the way to do it. Puppy rotates Radiant's back up, tethered up with Kuro, and they will continue to harass this Storm Spirit, who's not getting much in the way of farm. Only five last hits on him and only five on Zai. So I guess it is a comparable level of... Uh, Non-farming. Zai, uh oh could this be your first blood? He's getting pretty low, pops the healing salve, gets knocked off by the quills, but he will live on about 30 HP. Close call, no first blood. Yeah, that salve saving his life, and Ohio, I don't know if he could have chased and got another quill off. He had the mana for it, but he may have gone out right to Johnny, gonna die behind the bottom tier one. He's committing for this kill, needs another Radiant's decay, but... Uh, the battle hunger attack. makes this so difficult. Yeah. Gives Axe that nice movement speed bump in a 1v1 scenario. Nice use of the courier here from Ch Ketchikimba. Putting He's going in for there. this kill. He's got another Whoa. void in five seconds time if he just chases S4 down. Oh, what a sleep from Puppy. Girl comes in to tether up S4. They'll try to turn this one around. Ketchikimba in some trouble. Now needs to head for the hills. Could this be your first blood going the other way? One more auto attack. They'll get it. It's Curl on the Wisp that finds the bonus gold in the last hit. Now toward the top lane. It's Arteezy that's in some trouble. Kinetic Field comes out, throws a dagger. And he's, he's praying to the Iron Jesus right now. He has got seven sick charges, so okay. they don't actually come that close to killing him yeah. off. He's just trying to bait him in even a little further. Okay. So first blood by Secret, not a bad start here. That was a nice turnaround. I thought S4 was in trouble, but he just baited that one. And that'll secure boots on the Wisp nice and early here. Also giving Zai a little bit of space uh, in the bottom lane here. Now that uh, there's been some rotations from Malaysia. He's at least level four. 
he's, he's holding his own. It's a tough lane against the Bristleback, and Ohio having the support of the Undying earlier on, so... We'll see if they continue the dual lane and look to keep the pressure on the Axe, whose blink timing is one of the more important timings of this secret draft. Yeah. Johnny now solo in the off lane. Looks like Ohio just trying to bottle up a rune. I'll head back to lane with a haste in tow. Hmm. Two bottles coming out. Oh, never mind. One on S4 now. He's closing in on level six in the mid lane also. Rolling over to the four minute mark. First night cycle. And this is the big question mark for Ketchikimba. Does he gank, does he farm, or find Dyer's some happy medium between the two? Looks like he will just head back to lane for now. Yeah, this is always where Secret do not want to let this Night Soccer snowball. They want to keep tabs of where he is on the map, and they will spot him coming back towards this mid lane, so... Could be a fairly quiet first night. Ketchikimba, I would say, needs to pick up a TP scroll, because just roaming around from mid lane is something that's not something... Not really you can rely on it. It's yeah. going to be ward spotting, you move through the river already, Secret have mid lane top river warded, so any movement will likely be spotted. Pick up a TP, counter gank, or just look to kind of use that to initiate in. Yeah. So, looking at a couple of these key heroes, the Storm on the Dire and the Axe on the Radiant, you talked about the blink timing on Zai, and Storm's a hero that just always needs farm and levels. Both of them not getting completely shut down, but not getting the amount of space they'd normally want. Which team would you say this benefits more, having to kind of sacrifice your safe laner? I think for now it's benefiting Secret a little more as far as slowing down the storm. Mm -hmm. If anything, maybe it's a bit comparable. The Axe can transition in the jungle, as can the storm. Um, I think, though, hmm, Secret's mid game is more dependent on the Axe blink timing than any kind of storm spirit item. So, from that point of view, it does favor Malaysia. That's true. And Bristle is getting a lot of farm. He's actually the CS yeah. leader right now. And what does he have coming out? Not a lot in the inventory. Spare basics for now. Okay. He's last hitting well, just but just boots bottle, bassy ring. Nothing crazy in the way of items. Very solid though. Fairly quiet early game as both teams just focus on farming. Now Storm up top, initiated on by Arteezy, but the support is here. Vortex comes out, there's the tombstone. Kinetic field catches two. Arteezy trying to head for the hills, pops his stick charges, quickly gaining more. Gets pulled back in with the disruptor and he'll fall. Now Kuro, TP and home, he'll make it. That'll square it up one-to-one -one as Arteezy bites the bullet. Well, that was a well-executed gank and just barely the damage they needed to kill the PA through the Wisp Hills. Kuro did all he could with the bottle charges, the magic stick and everything, but wasn't enough. And Very nice uh, kinetic field there. A hero that Mushi's pretty comfortable with. You got to be comfortable with Disruptor if you're going to second pick him. Yeah. <laughs> That was the craziest thing, seeing a disruptor bristleback opening. I just looked at him just like, what, what is this? Who, who is this team we're casting in? Do they not realize this is 6.83? Do they not realize there's a troll still in the pool? I mean, what's going on here? Fourth band troll, not something you see too often. Malaysia's just trying to win over the, the Bucharest crowd with some of their unconventional go. drafts. Hey, that's a way to do it. Win a game with a core lesh and then take a game with an undying in the off lane. Yeah, I'd say you could turn a few heads with that. Speaking of the Undying, Johnny only level 4 right now, going for that second point in the Tombstone, an ability you definitely need to level up. Rather weak in the first couple levels. Still haven't really seen the Undying have a big impact. Helped secure that kill onto Arteezy, but... So far, just slow and steady. Yeah, the support Undying takes a bit longer to truly come online. Not really finding the levels he was hoping for, and... We'll see if they can change things up here with this. And Dying's next couple of movements around the map. S4 missing off the map, had an invisibility rune, reveals it here onto the storm, and will also find a ward as he drops that lightning bolt. So, not the kill that he wanted, but eh, still gets something out of the rotation, I suppose. Gives some space to the Night Stalker to farm, and Puppy, he rotated mid, so he's leeching that XP, desperately trying to get level 6 to get the Fiend's grip. Talked a bit about Night Stalker, what's he going to do? First night comes, no kills, no assists. He did try and rotate, is the thing to note, though. It's not like he's just been sitting mid farming. When there was that initial kill in the PA, he was rotating up through the river, but you can't move around that fast as a Night Stalker to just walk to another lane to kind of take part in a team fight. All right, Tether actually wakes him up from his nightmare. A bit prematurely there. Okay. I'll just walk back to safety. Two TPs mid from Secret. I guess S4 will just go back to farming. Bottom lane, how's Zai doing? Almost level 9. Wow, he's gotten a lot of experience out of this lane. And all of a sudden, you look at his CS score, 54 and 0. He's closing in on that blink dagger. Just a couple of minutes of alone time in the lane, and 
He's already recovered. Yeah. This is certainly looking a whole lot better for him. We'll see if he's going to be able to continue farming in this lane or if Ohio's DD Rune and going to cause them some problems. Yeah, Power Tread's now up on Ohio. Just the Tranquils and a stick here on Zai. Mushi rotating over. Kinetic Field will actually put Zai on the other side, trapping Puppy in. Nightmare out onto Mushi. Zai will set up for the Berserker's call. There's your ulti from the Zeus trying to get Mushi into dunk range, and they find him. He gets decapitated. First kill of this skirmish, but now Zai will get turned around on as the Tombstone comes. More rotations as now Ketchik Imba joining the party. Bumps into Puppy, kisses him in the trees. Throws out of silence. Darkness is online, and Puppy in big trouble. The Bane Elemental will fall. It's a one for two with Team Malaysia getting the better of it. Yeah, and Grizzleback staying alive as well. That's a big hero to keep living right now. You want him to be able to farm up that Vanguard, get snowballing. Don't mind losing your Disruptor there. The Axe with that one dunk almost managed to get the movement speed you need to get away and maybe get some more kills, but net result is very good for the Malaysian squad. Bristleback, yep. well ahead of everyone else on farm. Yeah, and a great rotation from the Night Stalker. Finally, he gets on the board now with some decent gold to his name. Kind of curious where he goes next. Definitely wants to upgrade those boots so you can chase folks down. Probably phase boots on the horizon. We've seen a lot of these more utility type Night Stalkers. I'm curious what Ketchik Imba has in mind in terms of itemization here. Uh, stuff like Armlet is kind of okay on the core Night Stalker. Does he even just look towards the Aghanims for vision control? A lot of different approaches you can take to this hero. Yeah, I think this is more likely, just based on the way they play with the early mid game focus, I think he's going to go a more tanky build, either like Ags or BKB. Oh, BKB, okay. I think is the other big option. But. Armlet's not so great against the PA. He's got evasion. You can't really be a right-clicking Night Stalker this game. Axe is just tanky and has tons of armor with Berserker's Call, so... Yeah, fair enough. I think more likely we'll see a utility-type build from him. Okay. The Aghanims is sometimes the best of both worlds. It does give you that tankiness with the stats. Yeah. Yeah, Ags, BKB, Vanguard into a Crimson Guard. Depending on what Bristleback wants to go, all good. It looks like Bristle's going mech, which means maybe Night Stalker will be the, the uh, Vanguard buyer for the team. Well, Wisp is now level 6, so of course the threat of relocate is online. As 4 down bottom gets rotated on a smoke rotation, catches him by surprise, and it's an easy kill for Team Malaysia. Tombstone comes down to clear the trees, and now they'll claim a tier 1 tower. They can live in daytime, too. Yeah, that's a nice rotation. And on S4, no less, not even a support pick off. A core hero that they needed to slow down. S4 has been farming pretty nicely, and that knocks him down to the bottom of, of the farming cores. So nice little pick off there. Night Temple will hit in about 20 seconds time. So from there, that's when Malaysia will really look to start gaining some steam and just taking objectives wherever possible. So mm -hmm. Team Secret, once again, have to be careful. They just have, don't seem to be well prepared for the Malaysia aggression that's coming their way. Yeah. Relative to game one, though, a lot more even at this stage. 12 minutes in and the gold graph just about zeroed out. We'll see the ultimate fly from Zeus to give a little bit of intel, see where Malaysia is. Can often be a sign that a, a gank may be incoming. Yeah, KY XY even preemptively ball lightning towards uh, his tower. Here we go, Zai hops in, Berserker's calling to KY XY as well as Mushi. Mushi's still able to get off his ultimate and a kinetic field. Johnny goes down, KY XY ball lightning's back, but the tombstone is still alive. I'm not sure how well this will work out for Team Malaysia. Zai tries to TP out, Electric Vortex is there. And that makes it a one for two at least. Now in the river, Ketchik Imba, double damage rune on, finds Arteezy, he'll just TP home. Now he turns his sights onto Puppy. Sticky Nasal Goo comes out from the bristle, and they will chase him down. Nightmare blocks it out, taken off by Ohio. Ketchik Imba continues the assault, brain sap to try and heal up Puppy a little bit, but it's just not enough. The two for one quickly turns to a two for two, and Malaysia will now put pressure on the tier one tower. Yeah, and the fight starts well for Secret. They've got the lane ward there, they have got the vision advantage. Also the surprise factor of that blink on the axe, but once your Bristleback shows up, once your Night Stalker makes it to the party, Radiant's that's when it swings right back the other way. And Team Malaysia, despite losing one early on, can easily take a fight. Not to mention Undying. This Dying's is really the period of the game where he's going to shine as well. Yeah. This is kind of the stage of the game, I think, where Seeker just want to dodge fights as best they can, unless there's some sort of a pickoff they can find. RTC seems to be holding true to his uh, classic PA build, Ring of Health already in the inventory, probably the beginnings of a Perseverance for that Battle Fury and get that recovery farm going to try and dethrone this Bristleback, who is now just farming out of control. He's got a mech completed with a bottle and power treads at 13 minutes. Well ahead of everyone else in terms of net worth at this stage. And he's got a Vanguard oh, on the courier. Oh my, I thought that, uh, yeah. that looked a little short. Yeah, oh my he's, gosh. He's not done. He's massive. He's, he's nigh unkillable at this stage. I, 11 armor, 1500 HP, with the Vanguard mitigation, Bristleback on top of that. 
Unless you're looking at like a 4v1 huge. or maybe a 3v1 with the right heroes, like a Bane, Zeus, yeah. Axe or something. Yeah, he's not literally unkillable, but, but he is, he's yeah, massive. Yeah. <laughs> Assuming he plays like somewhat reasonable with his decision making, you're not bringing him down. Yeah. Johnny getting a little space in the bottom lane now just to soak up some XP. Has that tombstone maxed out and just picks up a Sage's Mask. Perhaps thinking about a Yule Scepter or some sort of utility item like that. Now the smoke rotation from uh, Team Malaysia revealed as they jump onto Kuro and Arteezy. Static Storm comes down to try and break it up. Kuro, no way to defensively relocate. Arteezy gets glimpsed to the low ground. Uh-oh, that's a bit of a mistake. Kuro gets chased down. It looks like Arteezy will live as he blink strikes back to a creep wave. So not the ideal setup here for Malaysia, but they still finish off the Wisp, stop Arteezy from farming, and they will be able to claim an objective off of it. So in the end, still a good... Good trade, if you could even call it that. Yeah, still very, very solid. And we'll see them look like get this team on tower. Glyph comes out here, but Ahayu is just not a hero you want to run into. Yep, has his back turned to the creep wave, and that'll be the end of the tower. Bristleback actually gets the last hit, so we just talked about his items. He already has another four figures worth of gold to spend, sitting around 1,200. Um, I think this this feels like an S and Y game to me. You talked about the Night Stalker not being able to get up there and right click as much, but this Bristleback with that extra bit of movement speed, the maim will give him a lot of kill potential. Zai initiation onto the Bristleback. There's the relocate, but catching him by had an invisibility rune. It was a trap the whole time. But in comes Puppy. Has the ultimate. Gets a full duration channel. Sets up for the dunk, and it's a dead Night Stalker. A trap on top of a trap here, Parker. As Secret find the better of it. That, that's a kill that, well, any kill on a core hero at this point, that secret, are desperately needing. Not the one they were hoping for, the Bristleback, but still pretty good in the Night Stalker. And this Bristle getting beefier and beefier, and I'm absolutely with you. Sanjin Yasha, so he can be more of a frontline fighter. The movement speed helping him out there as well, do right click damage. Something yep. like an SMY into a BKB seems. When you're Very this far solid. ahead this early on, the S and Y is just amazing. It makes yep. you so much stronger and actually turns Bristle into a lot more of a carry. Puppy, though, having that key ultimate in the last fight, now Fiend Script is something uh, Team Malaysia will have to deal with. And they don't have a ton of tools to interrupt it. There's the silence on the Night Stalker. Storm can vortex if he's in the right place at the right time, but that is something they'll have to be wary of as this game goes on. Yeah, so for Team Malaysia, they don't want to just sit back and get into that farm wall once again. Well, in any way right now, but they want to keep applying pressure. At least taking team fights where possible, maybe looking to pick up a medallion and go for another early Roshan like they have in the past. They've got Bristleback with Nasal Goo, who's been taking Roshan. With all the T1 towers down, that seemed to be the plan in game one. You take the T1 towers, then you secure Roshan, then you go for the tier two towers. Well, they've got the tier one towers down, so maybe this will be the next objective they claim. Secret, getting some good vision. Scouting out with uh, illusions. Maybe they're a, a bit skeptical of this timing also. And as that Wisp illusion gets suicided, they see Team Malaysia all grouped up on the high ground there. Another illusion Dyer's moving towards the pit. To see if there's anyone about. Uh, not going to scout out much. I think. Oh, there's the smoke. It gets revealed as Zai gets jumped on. He's all alone. No relocate, and they're just going to sacrifice their axe. Nice pick off there from Malaysia, and now all of a sudden, Roche, pretty tempting. Yep, absolutely. The medallion's there on your undying. You've got physical damage from your bristleback. There's going to be a wisp illusion nearby, kind of poking around, getting some good idea of where Malaysia are, but secret are nowhere in the neighborhood. They've got to just split push the top lane, try and finish off this battle for your Nartizi. This is going to be a free Roshan going the way of Malaysia. All right. Secret. Not going to make it to the Tier 2 tower to really do too much damage before Roche goes down. All that minus armor from the Bristleback is really significant at this stage. On top of the medallion, he goes down quickly. Tier 2 tower is still rather healthy. Mushi already rotating up that way. And of course the Storm Spirit, the one to grab the Aegis of the Immortal as he starts to close in on that Bloodstone. Yeah, this is good recovery from KYXY. He's getting up there as far as his farm goes. The Axe himself is still in a pretty good place, Zai. Working on a Vanguard now to go with his Blink Dagger, but he needs it too. He's getting into this stage where he's not really snowballing, and all, all that thought is Mushi up top gets jumped on by Arteezy. Still, Static Storm Kinetic Field comes out, sets it up for his teammates to come in and maybe turn something around. Puppy jumped on his Zai comes in, Berserker's call on two, Ultimate from Zeus doing huge damage. A mech is pop, keeps catching Imbo alive a little bit longer, but the Fiend Script gets another full duration channel. Now Secret on the run, Kuro and S4 both very low, Ohio low on mana. Can he actually bring him down? He can. 
It's the double kill for the Undying. Is now KYXY. Long range zip forward. Wants to bring down Zai. Has quite a bit of mana left to play around with. And of course, has the Aegis of the Immortal, so can afford to be rather aggressive here if need be. Ohio, even joining the party. Zai, I think, destined to head to the grave with this one. Running out of mana on your Bristleback, but doesn't look like it's going to matter. Storm gets the kill, and talk about that Bloodstone. Now, 900 gold. He just needs to pick up the energy booster and the recipe. He's only about seven, 800 short. A three for three trade, slightly favoring Team Malaysia, but essentially a break even. Really helping out Arteezy. He was the big breadwinner from that fight, bringing down the Disruptor to start things off. Now you look at that net worth and a comparable amount, but as this game goes on, that difference becomes a much smaller percentage. And Battle Fury is up on the PA, so Arteezy can start turbo farming and look to be that scary carry. Yeah, gets his Quelling Blade out coming on the Courier. He's got a couple smallish stacks here and there, and well, uh, just look to use what he can as far as this Radiant Jungle goes. Imagine Malaysia will not have in mind just letting him get complete uncontested free farm. Unlike last game, it doesn't feel like Malaysia have that great high ground sieging lamp without the Leshrac. And yeah. Instead, we'll be wanting to be a bit more aggressive as far as ganking goes and even taking team fights. It does feel like Malaysia are not snowballing as hard as they kind of need to be with heroes like Night Stalker, Undying. They do not scale particularly well. Bristle and Storm, they can scale decently, but against a PA that can farm this much and against a hero like Zeus who Maybe unexpected, but can scale very well with that static field. These, this very tanky strength core lineup is not as scary as it ordinarily would be, I suppose. Yep. Maybe a, a pipe on the way for Johnny. He's picked up the cloak. Could be a casual cloak for now, but uh, I think a game where a pipe could definitely be warranted. Uh-oh, initiation onto Puppy. KYXY catches him. Gets put in a nightmare. And Puppy will float his way back to his friends. It looks like Bane will live. Seems Malaysia maybe have their eyes set towards this bottom lane. They've still the Aegis on Storm Spirit for a couple more minutes. And uh, with no T1 tower at top lane, there's nothing really to have to worry about defending against some possible RTZ split push. So they are grouping up towards bottom and looking to make their move. Yep. Zai completes that Vanguard, as I pointed out. Much needed here. Blinks forward, catches Mushi as he TPs to the Tier 1 tower. The follow-up damage isn't there, though. He's not getting the spins, but there we go. Zapped down by the Zeus as well as the Bane. Support here from Malaysia. Ketchik Imba put inside of the Nightmare, but Johnny takes it off. Now the Fiend's Grip comes out to lock Ketchik in place. Is there any follow-up damage? Puppy desperately pinging him out, but there's no one to turn it around, and they will kill the Bane. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Curl and RTC just split pushing. This rate, they may be able to grab a Tier 2 tower. And S4 will keep the Tier 2 in the bottom safe. Secret actually starting to get some momentum here. Tier 2 tower up top will be defended by KYXY, but Arteezy gets a first hit coup de grace. Brings KYXY low. And now they start to retreat. Just very constantly ballsy play coming out from Secret. They're very courageous with some of these pushes they're going for, the split push coming out along these lanes. They, see they managed to get out with a blink TP now. Malaysia yep. just not really finding the ways to punish some of Secret's kind of uh, aggression and greed. And they're certainly not punishing this Battle Fury at all. And that net worth gap that we talked about is no longer a gap. PA is taken over as the leading farmer in this game, breaching that five-figure net worth and up to about 3k gold on top of that Battle Fury. So can start looking towards these more combative items, like an HOD probably in the near future here. Ketchik did end up going that tanky build, as you mentioned, on the Night Stalker. Vanguard completed, point booster up, so that Agonim's on the way, but still not quite there. Needs another 1,500 gold or so. And there's the Bloodstone. So 22 minutes in, Ketchik, in, or pardon me, KYXY, finally get that snowball rolling. Uh oh, now a fight's going to break out. Puppy puts Ohio inside of the Nightmare, and the Night Stalker will be kind enough to take it off. Puppy will try to TP home. Glimpse will be there to interrupt it, and it's a dead bane. Won't be able to get any follow up pickoffs with the Glimpse now and cooldown, but. They are poised to continue farming the Radiant Jungle, taking the bottom lane as well as they please. But there are more Aegis on KYXY. And this is the point of the game where eight Bloodstone charges, you want KYXY to start snowballing, start getting kill after kill. You want to take some fights or at least little skirmishes where possible if you're Team Malaysia. Definitely. Lensing in at the graph, still a very even game. Kind of topsy-turvy uh, around that zeroed out mark as both teams continue to find pickoffs and little skirmishes. Neither side really pulling ahead, and as we've talked about, I think that really does benefit Secret, as they do have the farming tools and a little more control as we move into this mid-game. Yeah, and even looking long-term to the late game, Zeus is the late game here is going to be very powerful. PA, of course, is, is a PA. On the Malaysia side, you've got Storm and Bristleback, which isn't too bad, but 
even the supporting cast, the control, the lockdown they provide is kind of lacking. Undying is going to fall off very quickly. Disruptor Silence is nice and all, but will get countered by BKBs. And yeah. you compare that to what Secret have with Fiend's Group with Berserker's Call. Control that goes through BKBs and is just generally more reliable. That's where Malaysia's late game can be quite weak. SNY now up on the bristle back. Ohio taking heed to our, adv our advice here as he wants to do some right clicking. Johnny, he's been pretty active this game. 3 2 and 8. I feel like that's a score you can't uh, scoff at too much, but. The window where Undying is very potent is kind of falling off. He makes a resurgence towards the late game, but it takes a long time and a lot of farm to get there. You see two fights uh, kind of break out at once. One in the bottom lane, now Zai silenced in the darkness. They will catch him inside of a Static Storm Kinetic Field. Ultimate from Zeus flies through, and I think Zai should be going down here. Yeah, down he goes. Meanwhile, in the top lane, they do see KYXY, but no way to lock him down with just a Wisp and PA. So it ends up just being a quick pick on the Axe, one for nil. It's Malaysia, get another freebie. Yeah. So one of the issues Malaysia seems to be happy, having is the lack of lockdown, allowing them to get follow-up kills or kills elsewhere on the map, but... KYXY, ball TP out of there, feeling like he's in a bit of danger. Not a lot of vision in that area. You look at dire vision and it's all on the other side of the jungle. They've got a, a remnant down, but outside of that... A lot of secret missing off the map. Nice heads-up play from KYXY not to take any unnecessary risk. So from here, both teams kind of taking control of the opposing team's jungle, looking to push out that off lane, and it is a kind of neck and neck race as far as net worth goes. Your Bristle and your PA matching up, your Storm and your Zeus matching up pretty closely, Night Stalker and Axe, and these are heroes who kind of fulfill each other's roles as far as like the, the counterparts that, that they present. Your Night Stalker and your Zeus, your vision heroes, you're kind of controlling the team fight. Zeus offers a bit more damage, and similarly with like the the Storm, oh, the Storm and the Zeus, sorry, as well as the Bristleback and the PA, who's uh, going to be your, kind of your late game carries as far as Malaysia concerned. Yeah, definitely. There's always that wild card of the Night Stalker, though. Once he gets that Agonims, that's when things start to change, and he's closing in. Less than a thousand gold away. Still not super scary, but gift from the Tempest of Battle. he's coming online. Puppy, not playing that sacrificial position 5 support, not much in the way of inventory items. That hasn't stopped him. It feels like every Fiend's Grip he's gotten off this game has gone full duration or secure to kill. Yeah. He's been very, very on point with that ultimate. And he's happy to do these kind of solo roam arounds because if he finds a hero, he's got the Wisp relocate back up, which can bring in two more quickly. And if he dies, it's because Malaysia have three, four heroes rotating through their jungle looking to punish him, and he's just the Bane at that point. So if a Bane dies to that kind of a rotation, you're not really too worried. Yeah. Johnny? Finds himself a Hood of Defiance on the Undying. We talked about a potential pipe pickup later on in this game. And I, I really do think it's quite useful here. You still got a lot of physical damage to chew through, but even just mitigating all that magic damage from the Zeus alone can feel worth it. A uh, pretty common go-to item on Undying. Seems like the Malaysia plan may be built around the next Roshan. You take Aegis, you have Pipe and Mech on your team, you five-man, you take down these tier two towers, and from there, manage to get Try and build yourself a sizable lead. This has been neck and neck game two. Neither one of these two squads has managed to ever really pull away more than a thousand net worths and not yeah. looking to change anytime soon. We haven't really seen many big team fights, and the few that we have have been essentially break evens with a, a comparable amount of heroes dead. We'll see the tier two bottom take some pressure from Team Malaysia. There is a glyph for the Radiant side, so they could pose a defense here if they want, but up top, the Tier 3 tower starts taking some damage. Arteezy will be tethered up to the Wisp. Glyph comes out from Malaysia. They want to commit to this Tier 2 in the bottom lane, and it won't come for free. They should be able to finish it off here as they start to TP back. Darkness comes out. The tower will go down. Tier 3 took about 50% damage. Bushi TPs back, and there's KYXY. Jumps in deep. Goes on to Kuro. Gets crit by Arteezy. Glimpse back. That'll break the tether. Can Malaysia actually punish this and find the kills that they're looking for? Kuro getting low, but now Arteezy comes in, gets some crits on Johnny, cuts him to pieces. And the Flesh Golem just left as a corpse on the ground. 10 second BKB used by Arteezy as Mushi plays ring around the Rosie. Kuro gets brought down by the SNY Bristle, and now Artur will BKB TP out. Ends up being support for support trade, but it's not done yet. Catch a Gimba. He's duking it out with Puppy and Zai. It's a two on one, just trying to buy some time for his teammates to get here and punish this. Puppy, the one that gets left behind, throws out a Nightmare, and he will definitely fall, making it a one for two. And his team does secure that room. And that's your Night Stalker Aghanim Scepter now, so... 
Vision control. Gonna start leaning towards Malaysia favor, especially if they can pick up a gem and look to deward the map using the help of the Ag Scepter. All right. Some momentum here for Malaysia. Still not a very large net worth lead, but a few more fights like that, and maybe they can start to pull ahead. KYXY. Looks like Orchid will be on the horizon for him with that Oblivion Staff already in tow. And as you mentioned, Aghanim's delivered on the Night Stalker. Hmm. So from this, Malaysia will look to probably secure map control, take what they can as far as maybe dewarding the map, take away Secret Vision. Probably secure a Roshan before going for some of these tier 2 towers. They've already taken the bottom tier 2 tower as well, so they're in a good position to use this map vision and control to their advantage. Secret roaming about the map, still just looking to try and find whatever farm they can. Uh, dire side with all this minus armor. Roshan is always a threat, something they'll have to keep in the, the back of their minds here. There's your ultimate from Zeus. We'll scout it out, but looks like Malaysia will just stay true to the course. Secret not really in a position to contest. Down he goes, and it'll be KYXY once more to grab that Aegis on the Storm. Yeah, that's uh, one of the best Aegis carries in the game. Your Bristleback's getting tanky enough that he's unlikely to die, and Night Stalker, similar story, with an Ag Scepter now to go with his Vanguard. Not only are you tanky on the Malaysia side as far as their two, well, two of their calls go and the Bristle on the uh, Night Stalker, but you've got this incredible vision advantage. You can see all the initiations coming your way, typically before you get caught out. Absolutely. Bristleback moving into the Assault Karas, a fabulous item on this hero. The Minus Armor naturally synergizing well with all of his AoE uh, physical damage output, but also helping out his team. We've talked a lot about attack speed on Storm, uh, both on and off the panel, and an item that naturally synergizes pretty well with him also. Team fight going to break out in the top lane, a long range zip. They want to focus down Kuro. Ketchik Imba, he's the one caught inside of the Fiend's grip. Kuro stays alive, and they'll lose their Night Stalker to get things started. Puppy will get punished. In return, Tombstone focused by Arteezy. Zai getting low. Berserker's call comes out. Four step to the low ground. Lives on 30 HP. Aegis of the Immortal gets deployed. And Kuro, one more auto attack will bring him down. They finish him off. Arteezy still alive, reasonably healthy, but Electric Vortex is there. Now Zai from the low ground reinitiates onto KYXY. Him and Ohio, the only two left alive, but he's zipping around like a madman. He's still alive for now. Arteezy may go down, but no, it's the Bristle that falls to S4. The ultimate's there, and it'll finish off the storm. Somehow, some way, Secret win the fight. Zeus staying alive that long in a team fight? Oh, that is brutal. S4's damage output there with just bolt after bolt. The static field damage as well. That was just huge for Team Secret. Not to mention, Arteezy still alive at the end of things as well. He is suddenly looking very scary on this PA. A very close call for him. That bristle back was one quill away from finishing him off, it looks like. Bristle had trouble finding the, the right target there. It seemed like he was just getting peeled left and right. Also, it would have been a completely different fight if Zai had died instead of four staff down to the low ground. He had literally 30 HP and just barely lived. The well, funny thing with him as well was like he's like, okay, I'm on 200 HP. I'm just going to blink in anyways. Yeah. This Storm Spirit, I'm not afraid of him. I go for some Disable and I'm going to look to use it to guarantee that we can get that extra kill, even if it did cost him his life in the end. Yeah. Very brave indeed. So glancing at the graph, still dead even. The lead that Malaysia carved out for themselves, well, it's dissipated, but still hovering around that 0-0 zero, zero mark. This is very topsy-turvy. Very uncommon you see it, 32 minutes in that neither team's ever really had more than a 1,000 net worth lead. At yeah. most it was like maybe 1,200. Two key items coming out for Team Malaysia though. We'll see Storm Spirit pick up his Orchid and the Bristleback now complete that Assault Karas. No tools for this uh, next team fight. There's no more Aegis of the Immortal. It was used in that last one. Nightmare onto Ohio. Ultimate from Zeus to help soften him up. Disrupted the first one to go down, but still gets off his ultimate. Not too bad of a start for Malaysia, but Arteezy just going mad all over this dire team. Crits left and right. They've already lost two, and everyone else on low HP. Now they get the bristle back. KYXY put inside of the Nightmare, setting up for the Berserker's call. They've got it. And they've got the kill. Four for nil. Johnny nowhere to go. It's uh -oh. going to be a full five-man wipe. Secret erupting with momentum. And now we'll finally see a big lead. That was big. That was just really, really bad for Team Malaysia. This PA just Dyer's getting more and more farm, just He's getting kill after kill. The Wisp doing what he needs to to keep the PA alive and dishing out good damage. And S4 doing what we saw last game from KYXY. He's got 18 Bloodstone charges already on his Zeus. Wow. Oh boy. It seems like they just have no answer for this BKB on the PA. 
That was uh, your eight second BKB charge on Arteezy, and whenever he's magic immune, they've just got nothing to lock him down. Well, decent RNG for Arteezy there, got some crits when, uh, when needed, but huge damage output in that fight. They need to find a way to jump on this PA and lock her down at least a little bit. This PA is only over 3,000 gold, so... Arteezy having no problems as well finding good farm all across the map. And there's your Basher. Even a Ghost Scepter now up on the Wisp. Kuroki feeling pretty wealthy this game. Nearly 1,500 gold just sitting in that bank account collecting interest. Oh, he, he wish it was. <laughs> if only. What a weird meta that would be. Hmm. Let's see what Kuro looks to go for here, though. But for now, things just... Something. Settling down for him as far as just looking to stack camps up for Arteezy, follow him around, help him farm those stacks, and so on. Yeah, at this point, it's just a taxi service. Allows Secret to find fights and initiation in all areas of the map. Arteezy can safely farm and then just hop into the battle whenever need be. Next Roshan, though, I think will be a, a big deal for this game. That is Rosh 3, of course. Still a ways before we know even what that timer is going to look like. Both teams with a big incentive to try and secure that Roshan. Just look at that gold graph. From zero to a 10k net worth lead for Secret. Yeah, one team fight, all it took, and we'll see what Malaysia can do to bounce back, but it is looking like a Secret 5 favored game finally, and looking to force that game three after a game one upset. And team Malaysia getting scouted out by Zeus Ultimate, any kind of uh, tricks they had up their sleeve to go towards this bottom lane, maybe now gonna be, be foiled. Top lane, tier 3 tower, taking a lot of damage. Arteezy will back out as he sees the TP reaction. A couple heroes rotating, but good old Cardi's there to bring down the tier 3 tower. And just like that, Secret get a free objective. Malaysia just not in a position to contest. At yeah. least not in time. And this is where your Storm is decent in the mid lane. 3, 2, and 7. He's level 18, but doesn't really want to engage and be risking his life to go in. Right now, Malaysia is stuck in this eerie situation where they're kind of turtled into their base. They don't have a lot of wards down and just losing map control. And this is where Seeker can just start to slowly starve them out, clear out the Dyer's jungle, and even when they do venture out of their base, make sure there is no farm to be found. And so far, pretty good job of, as far as getting that map control. The Zeus helping things out with the ability to de-ward, and Double yeah, as damage. a result, Team Malaysia. Really struggling to hold their own side of the map here. They have got a gem on Ketchik Imba, looking to take what wards out he can, especially during the night time with that unobstructed vision bit. Oh, they've caught one. They'll find Puppy. Static Storm Kinetic Field comes out, and this should be a pretty easy kill, but no, Arteezy comes in. Bristleback will finish off Puppy. Now goes in on the Kuro. There is a relocate here. So Kuro could try to do this defensively, but no, he'll try to TP out. Storm zips across, brings him down. Arteezy with a BKB on, will fight as long as he can. Glimpse brings back one. Buyback from Kuro. Will ultimate into the fight, tethers up onto Arteezy, but it'll cost him his life. It's a dieback now for the Wisp and a triple kill for Ohio. Arteezy does isolate the Undying with the help of Zai. They'll sandwich him there as Ohio reinitiates. Do they want Zai or do they want Arteezy? Maybe even both. Can they get the two for one special? Ohio getting low. In comes the Storm Spirit. Down goes the axe. Arteezy low and in the grave. Double kill for KYXY. And Team Malaysia take the fight. Really nice buyback from Storm. Recognizing the possibility there to kind of get some big high priority cleanup kills. Even if KYXY himself doesn't uh, really gain much gold off of that fight. Big picture wise that fight benefited Malaysia a lot. Get a, got a much needed kill on Arteezy as well. Really hurting the Wisp there. The dieback, he had a lot of gold. We were curious what he would spend it on, and well, it's all been spent. Okay. So from here, Bristleback still getting pretty scary. We'll have to see where Ahaya goes next himself. He's got the ACSMY, but another 5.2k gold. Also worth mentioning that pipe that's been picked up by the Undying. So Zeus still not really going damage items, but mobility, uh, tanky with the Bloodstone, 18 charges still, and the Ghost Scepter. But now with a pipe, his damage output not quite as scary. That basically mitigates his entire ultimate if they can time it properly. Easier said than done, though, of course. Yeah. Does feel like some of Secret lead, Secret's lead could be starting to dissipate here, depending on how Malaysia play things moving forward. Oh, my. Well, we know who this carry is. Yep. Ohio with a full MKB, Bristleback. Hitting very hard. These Warpath stacks on top of all this attack speed. 
He is not someone you want to square up against. He just want, he really wants to be able to fight the PA head on. Still not going to be easy against Basher, against Manta style. Helm the Dominator. Imagine the Satanic's coming soon in your PA, but it probably looks as, like, as a necessary thing to happen eventually at some point in this game where he can just look to take a head on fight with a PA. S4 now moves into the Refresher Orb. No Aghanim Scepter, but we'll have a double ulti in this next fight. Does have the Mana Pool to make this all work. One of the nice things about having a Bloodstone with this many charges. Get that nice, yummy Mana Regen. Mm. So for Team Malaysia here, things have slowed down. KYX play just with six Bloodstone charges on Storm Spirit is not really the ideal position for this time in the game. 40 minutes in, and Malaysia may have this map control, but at some point, their damage output is going to start to wane. It's a Bristleback with an MKB. Storm building towards where I imagine it's going to be a Hex. Maybe a Lincoln Sphere. And outside of that, they haven't got crazy late game damage potential. Could be an okay game for the Lincolns. There are a couple of spells they could use to break at your Battle Hunger, Dagger from PA. I feel like the Scythe is probably a, a better choice here. Harder to farm, but... Gives him that initiation power. If you can catch the PA with a Hex to start off a fight, that's that's basically a victory there. Same with the Axe, same with the Zeus. Gives you another tool to also interrupt the Fiend's Grip from Puppy. Something that they are, are lacking on. Well, Roshan, this one, Cheese and Aegis. As soon as one of these two teams takes it, and with Malaysia top lane, it's going to be Secret who Secure themselves, Roshan, this time around. Yeah, Malaysia don't seem too aware. So not really keeping tabs on the timer and just hand it over to Secret, uncontested. Aegis of the Immortal ends up in the inventory of Arteezy, and Cheese goes the way of Zai on the Axe. Yeah, Arteezy completed Abyssal Blade now that he's got the safety net of this Aegis of the Immortal. Looking to find a relocate opportunity in with attack. Kuro, but it seems that's something Malaysia fully aware of. We're just going to back off to be on the safe side, even preemptively, if anything. Yeah, Team Malaysia having trouble pressuring Tier 2 towers even, looking for the right angle to initiate, but it's not easy. Mushi not finding much farm on this Disruptor, a hero that has a very potent Aghanim's upgrade. You'll see some teams grab a Disruptor and really prioritize his farm as a support, but not Mushi. Could have a point booster, but for now, just on uh, Tranquils and a Magic Wand. Become that ultra selfless support. To think Mushi of all players is now in this position, but... Yeah, 41 minutes in with such a little farm. Yeah, team Malaysia making this kind of a, a transition work for Mushi as well as just the team as a whole. And Right now, though, game two not looking too fantastic for them. It's a 6,000 gold deficit for the Malaysian squad, but this is uh, they're at least catching up. To team secret mm -hmm. and secret looking like they want to pressure the base perhaps no outer towers to work on they've got Aegis and cheese seems like a good opportunity to try to force something but just kind of doing that brute force siege of the high ground seems like a, a very ambitious goal the tier three tower up top did go down looks like Artis will go in and start poking barracks Rex. yeah no heal available to this and you either glyph or you just lose your range racks in. Looks like it will be the ladder. Ohio gets caught by the Fiend's Grip, but the refresher from S4, the double ulti bringing Malaysia low. Pipe from Johnny comes out a little bit late. Now the rest of the fight will break out. It's only a one for nil trade. Kuro rather low on the backside as Arteezy is just doing an absurd amount of damage. Blinks forward, finishes off the Disruptor. Night Stalker gets decapitated by Zai. He'll buy back. But there's still two in the grave as the Storm Spirit was also picked. The top lane of Barracks will fall, at least the range will. There is a glyph, Dyer's but they'll use it. Well, with the melee Dyer's racks down, this puts Malaysia in a really tough bind. Haven't lost it just yet, but it doesn't seem like something they can position themselves to defend. And Storm's buyback still on cooldown from the last fight. Low on Bloodstone charges. They will find the Bane. A gem hits the deck. Zai blinks in with the Berserker's Call. Ohio getting very aggressive. Pushes outside of the base. Will try to chase down Zai. He eats the cheese. Ohio still not scared. He'll get disarmed. Couple minutes to the Halberd, and that'll force him to back off. Meanwhile, on the base, Arteezy. Ho, ho, ho! Woo! Well, <laughs> die back on the Night Stalker. On dying, also headed back to the grave. And Malaysia in big trouble. This could end up being the GG push right here, Parker. Secret getting so much out of this. Mushi, the only survivor for now. Now a buyback from the Bristle. 
Storm responds also. RTZ uses the BKB, still has the Aegis, rains the stun from oh. the skies. They bring down the Storm Spirit. RTZ still alive as Ohio forced to head into the uh, with the well. Oh, the Bloodstone Suicide heals everyone oh. back up. Kuro and RTZ, they're going to keep on pushing. What a play and from And Zeus is back alive. Boots of travel. He had 20 plus Bloodstone charges. What a heads this up push play. isn't stopping. With the tether onto Arteezy, that takes him to full HP. They go straight for the tier four towers. Looks like they'll take game two in style with just one lane of barracks down. And that's it, GG from Mushi. They've had enough. That'll take us to a game three. Well, a flashy way to end things in. Team Seeker bounced back after a surprising game one. They forced it to side up. My oh my.